Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you so much for coming tonight uh, on this beautiful summer afternoon. And um, we um, are really pleased to be collaborating with the Science Museum and the Schuhoff Foundation for this particular display. Um, and um, in a way, this exhibition has been a really a natural extension of our exhibition program. And if any of you were here to see last winter the Utopia Limited exhibition, we collaborated um, also with Henry Milner um, on um, reconstructing iconic constructivist um, works. I'm going to invite our next speaker now, Luke Specker, to take to the stand. The first time I saw the Shukov Tower was on film. I visited Jacques Ledoux, the head of the Cinematheque Belgique, who had imported in the mid-60s the first amount of Kino Pravda, Sika Vertov's great achievement, to the Western world. And there I saw, in one of the Kino Pravdas, the Shukov Tower. And from there, emanating radio waves and the image of Lenin. This was a, a moment of uh, great excitement. I saw a structure uh, which reminded me a bit of the interior of a Zeppelin. Um, on the other hand, it was uh, really like a mirage of an age when radio was part of humanity's dream. Uh, I was in Moscow at some point uh, filming in the early 90s and I went with the film team to the Shukov Tower which was unguarded that day and I climbed into it. I nearly reached the second ring when the milits came down on me with a gun and they could be fierce and I went down but I felt like uh, having embraced a loved object. And um, uh, the, f the film and everything else was destroyed on the spot, so we have only our memory and no documentation of it. That is often the case. Anyhow, um, I am very interested not only in this radio tower, but also in the whole symbolism of um, radio and uh, how, this, uh, how it is expressed in structures, in architecture. Um, we talked about purpose, engineering, and uh, political targets, but there is something else. And what is invested in these structures? And I do think, uh, uh, in a way, uh, uh, Henry Milner's work in following the steps of the constructor uh, helps us to uh, somehow identify with that moment of creation. Of course, we cannot enter Henry's uh, personal experience, uh, but we can see what he does, and uh, we have seen a film of him at work. It is indeed a reenactment. It is like um, a, nearly a ritual, following the steps, following the mathematics, following it bit by bit. Uh, searching for the practical solution. And there the model slowly, slowly reflects its uh, original. And that is a wonderful moment. I uh, do think that the early years of the Soviet Union were indeed years of dreams. The dream of a new world, um, certainly a dream that was uh, succeeding, uh, overwhelming, horrendous realities of the First World War. We learned that the Soviet Union was created and everybody was happy ever after. That's not the case. They dragged with them 
the, mar the horrors of the war and uh, experience themselves then the horrors of the civil war. So that birth of the Soviet Union was a very painful birth. But in this pain was also a center of a vision, the center for dreams. And that, I think uh, uh, I'm not too wrong in believing that, for instance, after the hardships of uh, Stalinism and uh, a, a, a nation, an, an association of states having suffered under his rule, that the arrival of the Sputnik and later of Gagarin's flight into the cosmos was a re release and uh, has given back the Soviet and the Russian people that old dream. Uh, forgive me if it sounds a bit romantic or I certainly do not wish to get sentimental, but uh, it is an interesting um, uh, quality which we find in the art of the uh, Russian and Soviet avant-garde in the works of the uh, constructivists, but also in uh, Malevich's uh, exploration of the cosmos, the st strange spheres where material and spirit meet. And uh, these artists existed in a particular time, and that is no coincident. It is really the time itself that shaped people, prepared them for it, and made them what they were, incredibly original creators of projects, concepts, which were then repressed and uh, given up. And it was, of course, part of our duty, my generation growing up after the Second World War, to rediscover and find a meaning in the art of these people. There was also that wonderful combination, cosmo cosmic quality, um, in the dream of space and flight. Tatlin was mentioned, Nam Gabo was mentioned. Yes, they were accomplished constructors, but also very complicated dreamers. And then electricity, just a mile down from the Kremlin along the Volga River, is Sholtovsky's power station, Russia's dynamo, one of the most beautiful pieces of architecture with mighty funnels reaching up towards the clouds and a glass frontage which reveals the dynamos, the, the uh, power engines of Moscow. Fantastic stuff. But this is not only a functional building, it also represents the dream of a future and the dream of electrification and uh, symbolizes the wish for humanity to progress. And then, of course, comes radio and space. Space uh, now as, as an intellectual space, as an emotional space, as a space of desires filled with the voice of the radio. And uh, Shukov created, uh, was probably the most beautiful construction uh, expressing that dream and that ethereal quality of radio, of voices transmitted, the voice of Lenin, the voice of Mayakovsky, 
This, this is uh, an amazing, uh, the beautiful uh, object, but also a reminder of that dream. But, and of course, uh, as we heard before, a, an amazing uh, engineering feat. I uh, have been always so excited about the fact that the tower, not only the way it was constructed, but how it keeps up is extraordinary because each ring has its internal curvature, which means the tower is standing stabilized by its own weight, which is quite wonderful. And the, the tower overcomes uh, the forces of gravity in the most elegant fashion and uh, uh, has fulfilled its purpose as a tool for broadcasting. Um, I uh, also think that, uh, the, you know, if you look at Broadcasting House here in London, this is a highly symbolic building. Indeed, much uh, uh, um, uh, influenced by, by the Russian uh, uh, understanding of rounded uh, uh, architectural surfaces. You know, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm sure, uh, but I feel certainly uh, that there is a bit of a whiff of uh, the, the Wesnian brothers in it. Or when I think of uh, Berlin's uh, uh, broadcasting house, which also is filled with the romanticism of uh, capturing and broadcasting voices. So uh, uh, th there is that uh, dream tangible in certain surviving structures like the Shukov Tower. Um, I think it is related very much also to the sensation of flight, which was new to this generation. For the first time, people saw man-made flying machines. Those who flew these machines saw the structures of the earth and saw how cities can be shaped, reformed, redesigned, how patterns evolve. And uh, here we are back uh, also at uh, Malevich's dream, which for a time uh, he pursued in his uh, architectural uh, structures and planets where he dreamt of cities uh, inhabited by new people and aviators and radio engineers. <laughs>